Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Sicilian's unique building, the Donjon. It replaces the regular Watchtower line for Sicilians, but how do the two buildings compare? And for that matter, how does it hold up to Japanese towers or other defensive buildings? These are all questions we're going to dive into. The most unique aspect of the Donjon is that it creates the Sicilian's unique unit, the Sergeant, which can then build more of them. We'll look into that unit in the second half, but first, let's just consider what the Donjon offers as a structure. Right away, notice it's 60% more stone than a regular watchtower, though still considerably less than the Crepost, which is also only unlocked in the Castle Age. The Donjon, as the Sicilian's version of the watchtower, can be built instead in the Feudal Age. You can see they're a bit larger than the watchtower though, which makes them easier to rush down with a large number of villagers, while also being more costly to surround with houses or walls to prevent that sort of thing. Their building time is 90 seconds, compared to 80 seconds for a regular watchtower, and 150 seconds for the Crepost. The only reason I point out the Crepost here is to emphasize that the Watchtower is much more comparable. In case you're wondering, sergeants build them in the same amount of time as villagers, so still 90 seconds with one of them. All of the regular rules around building apply, with the first builder working at triple the normal rate, making each added builder contribute proportionally less overall. As with regular buildings, they're also repaired by sergeants and villagers at 750 HP per minute by the first repairer and 375 by each additional one added. All this to say, while it feels like there's a brand new mechanic at work here with Sergeant's building, in a lot of ways they behave just like villagers. So now let's dive into the building stats. Again, I'll be using the Watchtower as the most natural comparison, and in Feudal Age, the Donjon has 43% more HP with identical range and attack. Strictly speaking, in terms of damage output, you're not really getting anything extra, while paying around 50% more wooden stone. Now they do allow for 10 garrison units instead of the Watchtower's 5, which you might think gives them more damage through extra arrows. In reality, they're artificially capped at just 4 extra arrows, the same as the regular watchtower, making it less important of a factor than you might think. That said, the extra space can certainly be helpful for keeping units safe. Things get a bit crazier though when we look at Castle Age, where the dungeon passively gains an additional arrow. Comparing them to Castle Age Guard Towers, the two have the same range and HP, though the dungeon's extra arrow does 5 bonus damage to enemy towers. That means in a head-to-head -head fight, the dungeon has a massive advantage, dealing 6 damage to the guard towers 1. It's a great example of how a seemingly innocuous change to a building's stats can have a dramatic effect, thanks to some sneaky behind-the-scenes bonus damage. Against units, the guard tower deals 9 damage before armor, and the dungeon is doing 14. That's roughly proportional to their stone cost, so the two buildings seem well-balanced in that regard. The dungeon's lower attack means it is getting the effect of armor twice though, so this might be overselling their damage a bit. Of course, the guard tower also has its own upgrade costs that require building a university, while the dungeon gets their power spike immediately upon hitting Castle Age. This is all with completely ignoring its ability to create units, and already there's some solid advantages. In Castle Age, the extra garrison space also helps a bit more than it did in Feudal, capping this time with 7 extra arrows. The extra arrows are again particularly good against towers and walls, giving them a nice advantage in tower wars. The extra damage doesn't work against castles though, as generally more expensive stone structures have bonus damage against cheaper ones, and not vice versa. Building armor in Age of Empires can sometimes feel a bit random, but the point is dungeons are good against towers, walls, and gates, but terrible against castles and crepos. Jumping ahead to Imperial Age, dungeons have another arrow added, for 3 in total. With all upgrades including arrow slits for plus 3 attack, a keep is slightly stronger with architecture, but does less than half the damage. At this point, the dungeon is pretty clearly giving you more bang for your buck, even with its higher stone cost. The stat increases are also happening for free as you age up, instead of having to buy them like you would for a normal tower. So overall, compared to the Watchtower line, the dungeon starts as a slightly sturdier version in Feudal Age with comparable attack. In Castle Age, it becomes more of a high damage version thanks to extra arrows, and in Imperial Age, that's even more the case, again, powered by extra arrows. It actually sounds a lot like Japanese towers with Yasuma, with their additional two arrows, so let's see how they compare. It turns out in late Castle Age, we can see the Japanese guard tower does about double the damage before accounting for armor. Factoring in their relative stone costs makes things look even worse, with around three times the damage output per stone spent. Japanese, of course, need more investment up front with the Yasuma tech and making a castle to research it, but the point is the dungeon is definitely a step down. Fast forwarding to the Imperial Age, again, upgrade costs are higher for the Japanese to get there, but we're seeing more damage and around double the attack output per stone spent. Saving stone allows them to cover a greater area with towers that individually pack more punch anyway. This isn't as much to say the dungeon is weak, but instead a reminder of how good Japanese towers are. Another comparable building is the Crepost. It is more expensive, but for that cost you're getting more HP, more arrows, and around double the damage output before armor. 
The point is, again, the Crepost is definitely a step up, and its cost reflects that. It also gives 20 population space, but with one less range, making the comparison a bit messy. Their most unique similarity though is that they both create their civilization's unique unit, and that's what we're going to take a look at now. The sergeants of course build more dungeons, but are they really a hardy unit you can send to the front lines and trust to get them built? Let's see how they hold up against some units they'll commonly encounter. Starting in Feudal Age, you can see they have 45 HP, 5 attack, and some reasonable armor. That ends up being better than the militia in all categories, and nearly identical to men at arms. What it loses in attack, it makes up for it with one more armor, so I consider the two units equivalent in melee, with the sergeants having an advantage against arrows. A villager, in contrast, ends up having 5 less HP and 2 less attack after loom, so sergeants should be able to handle being slightly outnumbered and essentially perform as well as men at arms. The sergeant itself also costs 60 food and 35 gold, which is 15 more gold than a men at arms, but it also comes without needing to pick up an upgrade. The point is, a Feudal Age Sergeant and Dungeon Rush has a lot of similarities to a Men at Arms and Tower Rush. Between the larger area to attack, higher stone cost, longer time to build compared to towers, and the fact that Sergeants take 20 seconds to train though, it seems designed to be too costly to pull off as quickly as an Inca Tower Rush. In Castle Age, just like the Dungeon itself, the Sergeant gets a free and automatic upgrade to its stats, with 3 more attack, 15 more HP, and plus 2 plus 1 armor, making it a pretty beefy unit. It's similar in some ways to a long swordsman, but with much better armor. Villagers at this point lag quite far behind and really shouldn't be fighting them if you can avoid it. The knight though has them clearly outclassed, and they take 15 to 30 crossbow arrows depending on your armor upgrades. All of the stats here reflect what I think are the essential early castle age upgrades. Again, considering dungeons are getting a free second arrow here as well, it's a really nice power spike for Sicilians in castle age. Skipping ahead to the imperial age, they again end up looking quite good compared to the swordsman line. They do have a fairly expensive elite upgrade at 1100 food and 800 gold, but their armor especially makes them quite tanky. That really fits their role at building dungeons in the middle of a battle. And of course you have the first crusade unique tech, giving up to 50 sergeants that can be used to rush down buildings, units, or secure some map control with your dungeons. So overall, my initial concern was that the dungeon rush might become a better version of the Inca Tower Rush. But looking into it more, I think there are a number of factors working against it in Feudal Age. From what I've seen, Sicilians are more of a scout into night civilization, with extra resistance to the usual counters thanks to a civ bonus. The dungeons instead tend to be used more sparingly for mostly map control. Keep in mind though, we're still only a week out from release, so players are still experimenting with the new civs, but that's what I've personally seen happening so far. Either way, hopefully this all gives you a bit of insight into how it compares to conventional tower and men at arms though, as well as how its strength scales throughout the game. Special thanks to Jean-Paul, L, Samantha, Kyle, Daniel, Brock, Ben, Princess Diva, Brian, James, Connor, Gabe, Noah, Zach, and Alex, as well as everyone else on Patreon for their incredible support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.